Welcome to Words of Aloha with Pastor Izzy Manzo of Amazing Grace Ministries International. We're headquartered in Kailua Kona on the Big Island of Hawaii. Join us now as we get into God's Word. Today, guys, turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 9. And we're going to get into the word here in 1 Corinthians chapter 9. The um, passage that we've been going over with Paul at the end of chapter 8. I know we took a little break for Christmas holiday and did the birth of our Lord and saw the things surrounding his birth. But now we're coming back to Corinthians. And Paul had just said in the end of chapter 8 that he... A statement that really blows my mind in verse 13 of, if you look at chapter 8, verse 13, he said, Therefore, if I, if food would cause my brother to stumble, what was Paul's attitude? I will never eat meat again, he says, so that I will not cause my brother to stumble. That's a guy who really cared about his brother, more than he cared about his own freedom. You now, Paul said he had freedom to eat meat. He had no problem with eating meat, you know. Um, the Lord Jesus declared all things clean in the scripture for us to uh, eat. So it wasn't a matter of, could he not eat it? But, you know, Paul was raised a Pharisee of Pharisees. He was raised in the Jewish culture. He knew all the law. Like, can Jews eat pork? Bacon? Do they get that bacon and stuff like that? Like, we do? No. It is, it's it, no go for having that stuff. So Paul, Paul was, um, you know, raised with this knowledge and... And so he, he explains that, you know, some of the folks, though, they were vegetarians. And uh, for spiritual, you know, understanding, they, they didn't eat meat and they didn't want to, to kill. And um, there's this guy that has red hair on the internet. What is his name, Jan, that, that does those silly um, videos on YouTube? And he, J.P. Sears. Sears. And he says, you people that are vegetarians, you eat the food that my meat eats. So, you know, he kind of makes a mockery of it. And just in t- tongue-in-cheek, this guy can get away with saying stuff I can't and, and, uh, in good humor. But, but he, um, he just pointed out, but Paul said, look, if I eat meat and it causes my brother to stumble, I won't do it. I won't eat again just, just so that my brother wouldn't be stumbled. Now, what a, you know, this is the last message of the year, but what a heart attitude to have that we care about our brother more then we care about stumbling, you know. I mean, we, we care more about that if it would stumble our brother than we care about our own liberty, you know, our own freedom to do. And now we go to the next chapter, which kind of is a disservice that there's a chapter break. It should just continue the thought. It's one letter. So just think of it as conti- a continuation. Because he goes into chapter 9, verse 1, and he says, Am I not free? Paul says. Am I not a, an apostle? He says, Have I not seen Jesus our Lord? He you remember, he got to see the Lord when the Lord smote him and literally made him physically blind for three days when he appeared to him on the road, when he was going out to persecute the Christians. And and it says he gave him a, I call it intensive seminary experience. Jesus told him in the book of Acts how much Paul would suffer for Christ's sake. Because remember, Paul is causing suffering. And so now he says, look, have I not seen... Jesus our Lord. And then Paul says, and are you not, you Corinthians, the people he's writing to, are you guys not my work in the Lord? Remember, he's the one that planted the church at Corinth on his missionary journey, his second missionary journey. And he stayed there a year and a half and pastored and taught them about the gospel. So he says, you guys are my, and this is interesting, verse 2 he says, and if others, to others he said, I am not an apostle, because I don't know if you notice it, but in all of Paul's writings, about half the books of the New Testament were penned through Paul, the apostle. And he always opens with, Paul, an apostle, called by the will of who? The will of the church at Jerusalem. Or called by the will... No, he never says that, right? He says, Call, Paul, an apostle, called by the will of God. Because he never said his credentials were from man. He said, God is the one that called me to this calling. Now, that's a good thing to know, by the way. What... Whatever God calls you to do, whatever your calling is, it's a really nice thing. Peter says, make sure that you, you're, you're diligent to know what is your calling. What is your choosing? What did God call you for? What did he choose you, elect you, is the King James. What's he, what did God elect you to do? If you're elected to be a treasurer in a, in a company, 
you know, or you're the you're on the board of directors, you know, you're elected as one of the the you're, you're, say you're the vice president. If you're the vice president, your job is not to do the treasurer's job. Your job is to do the job of the uh, of the uh, of the vice president. And sometimes, you know, if you don't know what your calling is, what you're elected for, it's it's confusing. Like in Christianity, there's a lot of people like, what's my calling? What's my election? You know, what did God call me to do? And you know, when Paul wrote to the church at Corinth here later, he's going to say that there are, there are many gifts of the Spirit, many callings that we use those gifts in, and and he and he tells how in the church when he writes to the church at Ephesus in chapter four, verse eleven, he says God first called apostles, and then he has prophets, and and he has evangelists, and then pastors and teachers. Now, when I grew up, the Baptists uh, there was a group of Baptist people who used to to teach a whole teaching called the fivefold ministry of the spirit apostles prophets you know uh, uh, evangelists pastors and teachers and they would always emphasize evangelists in this one group this church that was near us they were very strong on evangelism going out and sharing your faith with those that don't know and 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 uh, you know it's interesting they don't read the rest of the scripture it says all are not called to be apostles are they all are not called to be prophets, are they? All are not called to be evangelists, are they? You know, what, what's the answer to that? It's a rhetorical question, but what's, the, what's he trying to say? No, we're not all called to do these particular callings. And yet, in their church, they were saying, everyone needs to be an evangelist. Now, I, I kind of want to address that but as, since we're ending the year real quickly. If someone ever says that to you, we all have, let's go out, uh, let's go out witnessing. Um, we're going to go door to door and pass out tracts. Are we going to go stand on the street corner and tell everyone, you need Jesus? Have you ever been with a group that's done this or seen groups that do this? And you have some guys that are really gifted at it. They're in the front. They're up there, you know, sharing the Lord. And it's just natural to them. And other people in the back are going, I hope they don't call on me. Please don't, 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 don't call me. I don't want to talk. You know, and it, you know what it tells me? It's not their gift. It's not their gift. And the worst thing you can do is make the guy who's in the back going, no, 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 push him to the front. But in some groups, they make them do it. And I want to tell them the verse, all are not called to this. Because the gift of, of evangelism is different than, than the actual teaching that the Bible says that we are all called to be witnesses. Unfortunately, in English, somehow they think that they're synonymous. Evangelism and witnessing are equal. Evangelism equals witnessing. That's wrong. Evangelism is different than witnessing. Witnessing, the word in the Greek, is literally to be a showing of Christ. A showing. Now you can show Jesus in your life just by how you show compassion to someone, how you maybe see them, you know, I, I've seen my son in the just in the parking lot of the grocery store, some person struggling with, you know, older lady struggling with trying to get her groceries into the vehicle and he's like oh let me help you you know and you can be a witness of Christ just in in compassion to your to your fellow man just by offering here let me help you lending a helping hand that's a gift of helps that's an actual gift of the spirit now you're not evangelizing that person when you help them you're you're showing how Jesus treats a person and that's witness that's a witness that's a showing of Jesus by just using a gift of his spirit but evangelism is a special anointing. It's a, it's a, just like pastors or apostles or uh, uh, teachers, you know. Evangelists are gifted. Like, think of Billy Graham, you know, or Greg Lloyd. These guys are gifted evangelists. And evangelists have ways of teaching. I'm a pastor teacher. I'm not, I'm not, not really an evangelist. I can look at an evangelist. I've heard Greg Glory share the gospel many times. I've heard Billy Graham's sermons. And, you know, for me, I've heard him so much that I could actually imitate if you wanted I could I could give you a Billy Graham sermon it basically boils down to certain components evangelists always will share Jesus in a way that evokes a, a response from people who don't know Jesus and, and often they'll start with um, analogies that they'll use scripture stories you know parts of the scripture that explain that you know we're all lost and we need a savior and we need someone to save us. And, and, and they'll find an analogy like, you know, you're, you're in a storm and your ship is sinking. And you need, you need rescue. You need, the, you need the Coast Guard to come in and rescue you. Or else you're going to drown. 
And spiritually in this world, there's a storm going on in the spiritual sense, and you're in the storm, and you might not realize it, but Jesus is that, is that rescue boat that's come, and he's, st- he's sitting there. Now, he won't make you climb in the boat, but he'll come up right next to you and say, I'm here for you, and if you'd like, I can save you. Just reach your hand out, and he'll lift, pull you to safety, you know. Spiritually, and evangelists have this way of it, communicating. You have a need. You're going to drown. You're going to die in your sin, and you need to be saved. And so they'll use different analogies to explain your need for Jesus, our Savior. And they'll point to the one who is the one that delivers us from our sin. Now, that's a, that's a gift. That's a gift. And to do it, um, like for me, to do that every week, I'd go crazy. You know, it's just, I, I mean, I got that message down, like, just from listening to it many times, I, I'd be bored. But, you know, an evangelist can do it over and over because their heart, they're not worried about how, how much they might sound like a broken record because they don't care because they're still souls and they're looking at the white, like Jesus said, look up, the harvest is white. The souls are white for harvest. It's time to go and reap the souls. And they're looking at the, the harvest field. That's how come they can keep giving the same message over and over, maybe with you know different analogies, but the same, the same thing that, that is inviting people, come, come to the one who will save you. And I, I, and I admire the, the ones that have that anointing, but it's not mine. Mine's to teach you. Now, I'm fortunate because I got like a whole bunch of stuff to work with here. You know, I got the whole book to teach, and, and it never gets dull. In fact, the more I study, the more I go, wow, that's really cool. Oh, I didn't see that. When they put that in there, you know? And, and I've been doing this for 35 years, chapter by chapter, verse by verse, and it still continues to speak and help me grow. And then I get to share with you things that, that the Lord show. You know, I can only share with you what He shows me. But when it's, it, it's so nice that His Spirit constantly helps us to grow as we seek Him. So- Mahalo for joining us. If you'd like more information about us, go to our website, AmazingGraceKona.com and click the link to follow us on Facebook. That's AmazingGraceKona.com. Mahalo and God bless.